All right, we should be live. Microphone looks good. Window capture. All right, so we're back and we are working on the Grim Captain. So we're invoking rule zero for this one, which is if your playgroup allows it, it's fine because <clears throat> the Grim Captain is technically not legal as a commander by the commander rules. So the front face is not a legendary creature and therefore the card is not technically valid as a commander. Uh, it's also not a legendary creature or planeswalker, so it's not even valid as a brawl commander. So... I was, like, when they... So Mark Rosewar does this thing right before the spoiler season starts, where he tells you um, a bunch of random facts about the set with no context, and one of the things that was on there is that there was a legendary skeleton spirit pirate. And when I saw that, I'm like, if that's not the Grim Captain, I have no idea what that is. Like, it's a legendary skeleton pirate. It's gotta be the Grim Captain. So I was like, I want to see what it does, see if it is a cool build around for Commander. And it's technically not legal as a Commander. So... There were a few other, like, actual legends you can build around with no problems. Like, you don't have to get your playgroup to okay it. But I think the Grim Captain's requirements on the front face and what he actually does with those cards on the back face is interesting enough that I'm still going to do the build around. But yeah, the Grim Captain is not technically a valid uh, commander option. So you do need the other people that you're playing with to say, yeah, no, that's fine. <clears throat> and depending on your playgroup, that is either not that big a deal or an impossible task. Because some playgroups are very, yeah, I don't care. Like, play your fun thing. It's no more broken than what I'm doing. And then some playgroups are like, no, it's not allowed to be a commander because it's not allowed in the rules. And I am not playing against some random homebrew jank that I couldn't possibly have anticipated because it's not a legal play. And depending on which group you have or where they fall in the middle will determine whether or not building the Grim Captain is actually a viable thing for you. Now, I've played with enough groups that have been okay with things like Nightmare Moon. The My Little Pony card from the first um, Extra Life My Little Pony charity thing. So I feel very confident in building the Grim Captain as an option. But that is... I just figured I would remind everybody because this is only the second time I've been working on it because the new set came out. Like first there was... First I had a whole bunch of um, stuff to do the one week including getting a Wisdom Tooth pulled out. And then the new set came out. So... While I do want to work on the Grim Captain, there's a new magic set, and I've been playing a lot of limited trying to find my footing in this new set, because I'm not adapting to it as fast as I normally do. Like, normally I adapt quickly to a set, and then other people catch up and overtake me, especially on Arena. This set, I'm having a lot of trouble figuring out what I'm supposed to be drafting and what cards I'm supposed to be taking in what pick order, so... I think my um like my drafting and play styles are skewed in the wrong direction for this set, so anyway, enough about how I can't win a draft consistently. That's why we're building the Grim Captain and why I haven't been working on him as much, so we're only on the second part of the build and we are starting today with Cold Snap. So we are looking for we are looking for um Creatures that match the Grim Captain's creature type requirements. Uh, and also cards that will benefit our giant, angry, menace, trample, lifelink, hexproof, skeleton pirate. That's making our opponent sacrifice non-lands when it attacks. So, looking for anything that taps into any of those aspects of it. Um... Well, if we want ramp, we do a lot worse than Cold Steel Heart. Hop down to Cold Snap. Is Cold Steel one word here? It is. 
Like, that doesn't look right. Don't think we're gonna bother with Dark Depths. Like, we're mono black, we can do the Dark Depths thespian stage thing if we wanted to, and there'd be plenty of room in the deck for it. But, don't think we wanna bother. I think getting one difficult to get into play Doomsday creature is good enough. Yeah, I don't need Bristle Grinner, Gutless School. Yeah, we'll get my creatures in the graveyard the old fashioned way. Thank you, Gutless School. Uh, don't need the Rot, Martyr, Bones, Bauble. No artifact creature, Phyrexian construct. I think the only dinosaurs in Cold Snap and Ice Age block in general are in green, so. I don't think there are any black merfolk. There's probably like one or two black merfolk on Dominaria, but I don't know that there, any of them are monocolored. I know there's like the Vodalian zombie and invasion. And whatnot, but I right, don't really need any of those. Alright, so that was cold snap. For cold snap comes all of the commander sets. Alright, so twenty thirteen should still be on the um whatchamacallit, the we can't organize properly because the number... So the first couple commander sets, the numbers don't key up the way they do in future sets where all of the new cards have the low numbers and then all of the reprints. So the first two of them, so this one and the one that's just listed as Magic the Gathering Commander on Gatherer and like Commander 2011, I think, right? This is 2013 that we're on. So yeah, 2011, because it took them a couple years to make Commander decks an annual thing. And then an every set thing. I miss when they were just an annual thing, if I'm being honest. Way too much Magic product. I was just having this rant last night with... One of the people I was playing at the FNM with, and I was like, they asked me in one of the surveys, it was like the Commander Masters, it's like, how many, how much of this product have you bought? And I was like, six booster packs. And they're like, how much more do you plan on buying? Zero. It's like, why do you say that? Because you released, you know, um, what is it, like four regular sets, and. Um, the Lord of the Rings set, so we had, like, All Will Be One, um, March of the Machines, uh, Wilds of Eldraine, and, um, uh, what we're on now, Ixalan, so that's four expansion sets, plus, um, the Aftermath, so I had to get some of that, and then... The Lord of the Rings. So we're up to all of those. And then for each one of those sets, except for Aftermath, there's at least two, and in most cases, four. March of the Machines had four. Um, Lord of the Rings had four. And Ixalan had four commander decks. So that's 12 plus. The two for Wilds of Eldraine is 14. The two for All Will Be One is 16. And then you also release the Doctor Who. So that's 20 Commander decks. Um, oh, and the Commander Masters. That's 24 Commander decks released this year. At about $40 a Commander deck, that is $800 worth of Commander product. Assuming I could get it for... What used to be MSRP before Wizards decided that things don't need to have an MSRP anymore. 
So that's $800 I spent just on commander decks this year. I don't have the money to draft more commander masters, which is a shame because it's a fun format. And it has a lot of really good reprints that I would like additional copies of. But when I have to spend that much money on new cards that I don't own any copies of, I don't have the finances to also buy into an, like a very expensive product that I technically own all of the cards from. Like, it's just not viable at all. So... So yeah, I I've I'm feeling the fatigue of endless product streams, and that's not even taking into account uh, secret lairs that have unique cards in them. Cause I'm pretty sure we had the D and D set this year. Um, I didn't buy the angels, but I did have to track down the Arden Angel from it since this was the first time it was printed in a physical card form. It's one of the uh, digital only cards from before arena so there are two products that i know of that have digital only cards the first one is the microprose game uh set on chandelar um that one i actually had on the computer back in the mid 90s and uh there were like a handful of cards the most notable one because it came as the oversized promo uh, similar to the, if you've ever seen the 6x9, like Black Lotus or Siobhan Dragon or any of those, it was the same size card, was a thing called Aswaran Jaguar, which chooses a random creature type from among creatures in your opponent's deck and then can tap to destroy them or something, or pay like three mana to destroy one of them, uh, of that type. But there's also a bunch of weird, the only other one I remember clearly existing and I could not tell you what its random effects were there was a card called Goblin Polka Band, which, if out of all of the surreal cards you could possibly have, the fact that that one existed, and it had a very random effect when it at certain triggers. I forget if it was attacks or upkeep or something, but it was like all over the place with what it could do, and not particularly good either because of how random it was. And I don't think any particular effect was that strong, but. There's that one, and then there was a game for the Dreamcast, I believe, which is where Arden Angel comes from. Um, and I don't know any of the other cards from that one. I think I have seen them before, but that's because I use this one site called Magic uh, Librarities, or Magical Librarities. Um, when I need to figure out where some arbitrary promo card came from, it's still a lot of hunting. Like, I can't reverse engineer it. Like, one of the things that's been driving me nuts is trying to figure out where the one rampant growth came from. Apparently there was supposed to be an event connected to Lord of the Rings and there's a foil etched rampant growth with like Lord of the Rings flavor on it. And it just showed up recently. So I'm guessing it was supposed to be connected to the release of the uh, holiday uh, Lord of the Rings box sets and the like the scene box sets and the uh, alternate artworks um, collector boosters and I had like I had to get oh that's true I had to buy the scene boxes too which was like another hundred and twenty dollars to get all of the unique cards from that that's another thing where I probably would have bought more so I would have bought more of those. I would have bought more of the Doctor Who if I did not have to buy literally everything else this year in order to maintain my collection. Like, so much product fatigue with their release cycle. I really hope... Like, it's going to take a while. I know a lot of people that have been complaining about that. So, there is a chance that we eventually relax the release cycle a bit. You know, maybe take, like, three or four hundred dollars worth of product off the schedule per year so that I can breathe a little bit and maybe pick up a couple extra cards here and there but yeah the the current plan is to just inundate us constantly with new product so that way spoiler season never ends and yeah I'm really hoping that 
we ca when we catch up because Wizards is like three years into the future as far as product goes. So next year we'll probably also have a relentless release schedule. Maybe the year after that because once we start getting like more than a year out, I think they have room to calm down and start spreading the things that they're working on out a little bit more. But right now they are stuck on the we need to get product out so that people are constantly have something new to buy. So that way when they're done, tired, bored, or completely disinterested in the first place with this product, that's fine. We've got a new thing like two weeks later for them to worry about. And it's just like, could we not? Could we just breathe in between? Can I take some time to enjoy the new Magic set before I'm getting spoilers for the set after that and the set after that one? And, you know, like, I don't even have the Doctor Who cards in my hand, and I already know what the commanders are for the Fallout deck, and, uh, like, ten cards from Ixalan. <laughs> you know, can can we just breathe in between each Magic set release? Can we have a week off where you're not asking me to spend more than, like, the $20, like, $16 on a draft that I'm doing? Because I would appreciate it. Um, no maximum hand size. Yeah, we don't need... Don't need price of knowledge. And what else is unique to this set? Not as much. That's the benefit of doing a monocolored commander. There's a lot less cards to look at. I don't think I cared for Surveyor's Scope now. Tempt with Immortality. Return a creature card from your graveyard to the battlefield. Each opponent may return a creature card from their graveyard to the battlefield. For each opponent who does, return a creature card from your graveyard to the battlefield. It's hard to get this to the point where it's really good for you and not really good for the opponents. So, probably not. There's Toxic Deluge, which I can consider as a Wrath. Since it does kill basically anything. Grim Captain, Grim Captain's lifelink? Yeah, he is. So, that helps even more as a means of... Hey, we can kill all this stuff, and we can gain back the seven life later on. Uh, Menace Trample, Lifelink, Hexproof. We do need to give him haste. Probably be doing a Boots and Greaves thing, because I definitely want to be able to immediately attack with my Grim Captain. Alright, so that was 2013. Oops, where did I put that? We're in Cold Snap, and I'm putting Toxic Deluge up there. Uh, cut that. Go to Commander. I'm sorry, I got so waylaid by my own bit of ranting. So, Toxic Deluge. It's two and a black for a sorcery. Here, real quick. I want to do the Scryfall one. So, Commander is black. And we want to do the first Commander set to be sure. Commander 2011. Right, we don't need the Acorn Catapult. Uh, Crip Creature gets Hexproof, which he already has. Uh, the Keiko Demon... Uh, has to be cast, destroy all creatures your opponents control, then tap all other creatures you control. How much is it to flip the Grim Captain from his front face? Is four. So, that's a pretty big ask on top. That's 14 mana in a single turn to cast this thing, kill everything else, um, and then flip the Grim Captain and attack with him. Like, give him haste. That's at least 14 mana, probably 15 if we need the boots instead of the greaves. So. A hex is a reprint from original Ravnica, I think. Uh, there's a battlefield, choose a player. 
Power and Toughness, each equal to the number of cards in the chosen player's graveyard. Cast a spell, that player puts the top card of their library into their graveyard. Now, deals combat damage to a player. Each opponent discards a card. Each player who discarded a card with the highest converted mana cost among cards discarded this way loses life equal to that mana value. Um... Each player may pay any amount of mana. Each player puts the top X cards of their library into their graveyard, where X is the total amount of mana paid this way. Um, I don't think so. Like, we don't want our opponents to get a ton of graveyard value. Like, I'm almost definitely running things like Nazumi Grave Robber and uh, Dothy Voidwalker in this deck. So that way, when the opponents lose stuff to the Grim Captain, they're not getting value out of that. So the opponents are not likely to help us cast this, even if they have a graveyard deck, because they might be worried about how I'm going to exile their graveyard. Or I might already have a way to do that in play. So that's just us paying Black and X to mill everybody X cards. Which is fine, but I think we can self-mill better than this. Uh, Siphon Flesh is okay, not amazing. And don't need Val of Malice. Okay, I just wanted to check. Make sure there wasn't anything else. <clears throat> also, I want I want to have all the commander sets done. Uh, 2014, so now we should be able to do... The upside to doing it on Scryfall is it's a lot easier to look at the individual cards. The upside with, with um, Gatherer is that I always know if it's from this set or not. <clears throat> but with this thing, I can technically look at it and know that it's from this set, because now they're in numerical order. So, Demon of Wailing Agonies, plus two, plus two, deals combat damage to a player. That player sacrifices a creature. So, having the Grim Captain's Throne, if we're rule zeroing it, should still count as controlling my commander, because it is still my commander. Like, the Demon of Wailing Agonies would trigger if I had the... um what are they called? The backgrounds? Because those are still technically commanders for the purposes of controlling your commander. That's why some of them say um, if you control your commander, it's a creature or planeswalker type of deal. Or it requires it to be a creature in order for the thing to have a function anyway. Like it doesn't allow itself to be... Um, much of a commander otherwise like it doesn't get the bonuses and everything but yeah so the throne should still count as controlling our commander for that effect um which would give us another thing that can attack and make them lose things but it's a damage trigger not an attack trigger so that's a little less impressive Um, yeah, ultimately, probably not. Uh, Flesh Carver, sack a creature, put counters on it when it dies, create a horror. No. Don't think I need Gisa. Uh, choose an opponent. You and that player each sacrifice a creature. Each player who sacrificed a creature this way draws two cards. Choose an opponent, return a creature from your graveyard to the battlefield, then that player returns a creature from their graveyard to the battlefield. So notably with this one, if I'm hating on graveyards, I do get to, like, I sack a creature, they sack a creature, and we draw two cards, but then I can choose another player if I haven't immediately exiled that card anyway, and, you know, a player with an empty graveyard, and then we each get a creature back. Except they won't have anything. Hmm. 
I don't know how much I care about getting the creatures back, because having them in the graveyard is kind of the point for the Grim Captain. Necromantic Selection, Overseer of the Damned. Tutu Black Zombie. It's okay, it's not amazing. Yeah, and Raving Dead, not really where I want to be at. Uh, only during combat on opponent's turn, return X target creatures from your graveyard to the battlefield. Sacrifice those creatures at the beginning of the next end step. Eh. Don't think we need Commander Sphere, Crown of Doom. Uh, draw three cards, one less for each, or one more for each card in your hand, rather. A Masterwork of Ingenuity. Stable Obelisk, no. Like, I think we can do better than Unstable Obelisk. We can run Myriad Landscape, since it can get two swamps for us. And you know me, I love me some fetch lands. Um, and then we're into the reprints. Okay. That was 2014... One word to 2015. All right. Hit the button. Entry of the Dread Choir. Um. Nah. Also, not any of the creature types we care about. Corpse Augur. So, I can target myself, because I'm going to be a self-mill deck to draw a whole bunch of cards. I do have that. Each creature card put into a graveyard this way, create a... Tap 2-2 two, two black zombie creature token. See, that seems like a way better self-mill card. Then the other thing, we pay an extra black mana and we get a whole bunch of 2 2 zombies out of it. Maybe Dread Summons? It's X black black for a sorcery. Getting back to Corpse Augur, do I actually want that? Dies, draw X cards, lose X life, where X is the number of creature cards in target player's graveyard. I mean, probably. I want to at least consider it. There we go. There, yeah. A zombie wizard. Ew. Black and two, not black and three. There we go. All better. All right. I don't think we need deadly tempest as one of our wraths. Uh, Scourge of Nel Toth requires sacrificing two creatures. Yeah, don't that. Uh, Thief of Blood is a vampire. Remove all counters from all permanents. Thief of Blood enters the battlefield with a 1-1 one -one counter on it for each counter removed this way. It's really trying to tempt me to go back and add um, the Merit Lays just as another big Doomsday legendary creature. <laughs> Like they can hang out together. They're 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 like two peas in a pod. One's frozen beneath the ice. The other floats in a ghost ship across the oceans. <clears throat> Surely, what one above the water and one below, they could get along just fine. Uh...
I'm looking at the Thief of Blood because it is a vampire and removing counters from permanents. It kills planeswalkers. It takes all the 1 1 counters off of creatures. It takes away, like, anything the opponents are building towards. The downside is that it also takes away any penalties they've accrued minus one, minus one counters. Um, like, counters that build up and then kill the permanent that they're on. <clears throat> and, of course, opponents. Dark Depths and whatnot. Which I don't see that much, but I have seen Commander decks in my area with Dark Depths in them, so that can be a bit rough. Um, do I want Thief of Blood? I can put it on the list and then I can decide later if I want to go back and add <clears throat> the Dark Depths. Because it is a vampire, so it is one of the creature types that the Grim Captain cares about, and it does have some utility as, like like I said, it kills all Planeswalkers in play, <clears throat> and it takes away uh, all of the positive counters that players are building up towards, which are a little bit more prevalent than negative counters that aren't being put on by an opposing player, so... But there are the things where you're trying to get rid of the counters to get an effect, and we do have to be a little leery of those. Uh, seal doesn't do anything. Thought Vessel, no. <clears throat> we want the Scythe Claw. Hmm. Like, would we be better off with, like, the Quietest Spike? We had a Spike thing from Shards of Alara. Maybe? <clears throat> Alright, so that's Commander 2015. Commander 2016. There we go. <clears throat> Thing in. <sighs> yeah, don't need Curse of Vengeance. Rule Entertainment is one of those cards that I always want to find a deck that it goes in. One of these days I'm going to build a different version of my Bolas deck that is more about being evil than about turning your opponent's cards against them. And Cruel Entertainment is definitely a card that goes in that build. Draw X cards and lose X life where X is the number of counters on that creature. No. <clears throat> Not a lot of cards in this one, so... I don't think we need Magus. I uh, don't need the Armory Automaton. Even though it can steal opponent's equipment when it attacks. Yeah, Conqueror's Flail is only going to be a plus one, plus one, and I don't think I care that much about <clears throat> stopping my opponents from casting spells on my turn. Uh, Geoscope is terrible, and Ash Barons. Nope, okay. 2016... 17... <clears throat> Alright, so here's the Vampire and Dragon theme deck, so... <clears throat> Excuse me, we'll get a few vampires here. Uh, you may return target vampire or wizard creature card from your graveyard to the battlefield. Oh, that's true. There's also a Grixis Wizards deck. So, be a little bit of that. Uh, you may return target vampire or wizard creature card from your graveyard to the battlefield.
I don't know how many wizards we'll have that aren't one of the other creature types, but... <clears throat> like, casting a 3-2 and then getting one of our more expensive vampires back, especially since we're going to be self-milling, so we should be able to stock the graveyard, so a reanimate on one of our uh, vampires is probably decent. Alright, so this is Bloodline Necromancer. Hi, what are you doing there? Four black vampire wizard. Two. <clears throat> All right. Uh, don't need the zombie dragon, and we're not going to have dragons dying. Uh, deals combat damage to a player. That player exiles a card from their hand face down. You may look at cards exiled with Mind Eater, and you may play lands and cast spells from among those cards. Um, do I want the Mind Eater? It does take cards from players' hands, so I can do that. There's also a thing that buffs all of my vampires and exiles opponents' creatures. <clears throat> mm. So, do I want the Karu Mind Eater? One three menace lets me steal cards from the opponent's hands, maybe? So two and a black, vampire, one, three. Let's see, I don't think I need new blood to steal an opponent's creature. I'm wondering if I do want the patron of the vein, though. So... It ETBs, it kills a creature in opponent control, so it's already like a ravenous chupacabra effect on a vampire. Um, and there should be a couple of other ways for me to cheat expensive vampires into play. I'm thinking of like the mono black Soren from one of the M sets. Plus, we should have some reanimate effects going on, so maybe. The vein is four black black for a vampire shaman four four. Aw, he's not a wizard. Yeah, I can only be get gotten back by the vampire side of Bloodline Necromancer instead of by the wizard side. I do not need Blood Forge, Blood Forge Battle Axe. So the hammer would give the captain indestructible. Plus two, plus O. Oh. I do want to be able to make the captain indestructible. I'm just wondering if um, some of the other equipment like this wouldn't be better. I think Mithril Coat's going to make it, as because I can flash that in and give the captain indestructible to protect him. So, just that... I don't know, because this thing attaches for free the first time it comes in. And then gives your other equipment the ability to attach for free when they come in, but I don't... Like, the equipment that I'm going to be running for the most part should be pretty cheap. So, I don't know that I would want the hammer. Uh, all of these require me to choose a creature type, and I have so many creature types... To begin with, that uh, I don't think those are particularly where I want to be at. So that was 2017, 2018. 
Add, add the thing in. <clears throat> All right, Vampire Wizard. Four mana, two, two flyer. Pay two life, put a counter on it. When it leaves the battlefield, draw a card for each one, one counter on it. Yeah, that's that's a weird um, greed, and I think I'd rather just have greed if I want that effect. Turn X target creature cards from your graveyard to the battlefield. Miracle, two black, and X. So it's five to reanimate one creature and seven to reanimate two if I draw it outside of the Miracle <clears throat> window. Um, probably not. A little subordinate. Yeah, I don't think so. Light incarnate. Copy it for each time you've cast your commander from the command zone this game. Each opponent sacrifices a creature. Each opponent who can't loses half their life rounded up. Probably not again. Well, we can run Endless Atlas if we want, because we will almost definitely have three swamps in play. I don't know how good that's going to be if we actually want that. Like, it's relatively cheap to play and activate, but we also have um, some more reasonable, repeatable card draw effects, like a card draw effect every turn. Uh, not the least of which is, um, you know, Phyrexian Arena. So, I don't know that I would also need the Endless Atlas, but who knows? Maybe I do. Maybe I need to draw those extra cards. Yeah, Forge of Heroes, not really doing much when my commander is neither of those things. Technically, which one was I just on? 2018, so we need 2019. We'll go grab Ikoria from Scryfall, probably. <clears throat> and do um, Strixhaven. Uh, whenever a source an opponent controls deals damage to Archfiend of Spite, uh, that source's controller loses that much life unless they sacrifice that many permanents. It has Madness for 5. I don't know that I have the means to Madness this out. Like, I don't think I'm going to be doing a lot of looting or discarding for value. So, I don't think the Madness cards are where I want to be at. If this were a Vampire, maybe. Uh, I don't think I need the Bone Miser. Again, not discarding for value. Uh, Curse of Fool's Wisdom. Yeah, this isn't really a Carrick deck. Gift. No to Meyer, <clears throat> Thieving Amalgam. Manifest the top card of that player's library. Whenever a creature you control but don't own dies, its owner loses two life and you gain two life. And not really what this deck is about either. Don't need the engine. The Bloodthirsty Blade. Not consistently making creature tokens. <clears throat> or tokens in general, really. Pendant. Um, don't need Scare Tiller. Scroll of Fate. Sanctum of Eternity.
And now we're on to reprints. Okay. So that was 2019. So we add the 2021 in, but we'll go here for... Twenty twenty first, which should be um Ah the name's gone out of my head, the mutate set. Uh, set number. Um Icoria. Like Ixalon, the name Ixalon got stuck in my head because you know trying to think of a different set with the letter starting with the letter I while well, I've been on Ixalon like Ixalan on the brain for the past week and a half now. Um, never another creature you control leaves the battlefield. If it had one or more counters on it, you draw a card and you lose a life. No. Cryptic Trilobite. No. Uh, are each equal to the number of creature cards in your graveyard? It has Scavenge Black and four. Eh. Exile it from your graveyard, put an indestructible counter on target creature. Also, like, okay, not amazing. Uh, choose a creature card in their graveyard, put those cards onto the battlefield under your control. No. Mutate four and a black. Flying, whenever... This creature mutates. Exile the top card of each opponent's library face down. You may look at and play those cards as long as they remain exiled. Doesn't give me the ability to spend mana as mana of any color, though. Uh, put your commander into your hand from the command zone, then lose three life for each counter on it. No. Go to the specialist. Titan Hunter, <clears throat> Bonder's Ornament, no. And Escape Refractor. Has a lot of potential in black because we get access to the Coffers and Crypt of Agadim and um, Nykthos. Like, we could have any one of those in play and be able to use this. So I suppose I want Man Escape Refractor just in case. I want to make 10 trillion mana in a turn. Refractor? Refractor. As opposed to Reactor. Artifact. And I don't think we need the nesting grounds. Okay, so back over here. Alright, let's do Strixhaven next. Others getting all fussy because I went and used Scryfall for a couple seconds. Alright, another gold set, so... Oh, right, this one also gets weird with this set. I forgot that, actually. Alright, let's pop back over then. Uh, enters the battlefield, exile all cards from all opponents' graveyards. Choose a non-land card exiled this way. You may cast that card as long as it remains exiled. Uh, whenever a non-token creature you control dies, create a 1-1 one -one pest. Um, yeah, I don't care about the plagiarist. Don't care for cunning rhetoric. Uh, Fane the Broker. The two one one counters on target creature. Remove a counter from a creature you control. Create a treasure token. Sacrifice an artifact. Make a two one flyer and four mana. Untap him. So 
don't think so. Mill five cards, return a creature card from your graveyard to the battlefield. That one's harder because we actually need to have one of the replacement effects going on to stop them from getting the creature back. Like, we would need Dothy Voidwalker or possibly um, Leyline of the Void, you know, something like that. Because we can't exile their graveyard in response. There's no in-between milling the cards and getting a creature back <clears throat> once the spell starts resolving. Eight Keen Duelist. Uh, pay life rather than pay the mana cost. It is a vampire, but no, nah, I don't think so. Yeah, it's not really worth it. <clears throat> um, in my end step, if I gain life this turn, pay X, where X is the amount of life I gain, make a demon. Eh. Uh, Vain Witch Coven. I mean, our commander does have lifelink, but I don't think I'm going to be gaining a ton of life outside of that. I will have other vampires, so that might not be true. <clears throat> I guess I can put them on the list just in case that becomes a factor. It's two and a black for a vampire warlock. Three. I don't know how much life potentially I'm going to be gaining in this deck, so. Commander already has lifelink. Uh, try X Rex is the number of times it's been cast from the command zone. Nope, don't think so. So that was Commander 2021. And we're just coming up on the hour mark, so what would be next? Um, yeah, Commander Legends, Commander Legends, Bowlers Gate. I think we'll start with those next time. So I'm going to call it there. I'm going to take a bit of a break. So I'll be back in like an hour or so. And oh, that's true. Then I got to figure out getting my brother to work. So yeah, I'll be on later tonight drafting more um, Lost Caverns of Ixalan, but that'll do it for me for right now. So thank you for watching, and I will see you next time. Have a good rest of your day.